ich heiße Moritz Grafonara und wohne hier im Lande. Ich bin 64. Nicht, nicht schlecht getragen. <lacht> hier oben bin ich jetzt seit 43 Jahren. Ich hatte das angefangen mit 22. Es ist im, im Nu vergangen. Es kommt mir vor, wie wenn es gestern gewesen wäre. Ich bin fast das ganze Jahr hier oben und es gefällt mir jeden Tag besser. Der traditionelle Stil in den Alpen, das sollte Häuser aus Mauer und Holz sein. Aber in diesem Falle hier mit Ross möchte ich etwas auf die Beine stellen, was komplett ein totaler Kontrast ist. Ich bin für die Neuigkeiten, für das Weitergehen, für Entdecken und auch zu spielen. Ein Bett unter den Sternen, das wollte ich. Da kann man sich schon vorstellen, nicht? Mein Freund Christian sagt ja, aber da musst du einen Designarchitekt von Weltrang hernehmen. Sagt, ich kannte niemanden. Der sagt, ich kenne wahrscheinlich den anderen. Aber es ist unnötig, ihn herzubekommen. Aber da kam er am 1. Dezember zu mir bei der Tür rein, haben uns angesehen und haben uns umarmt. Und da habe ich gesagt, ja, jetzt, jetzt weiß ich noch nicht, was wir genau machen. Da muss ich Ross entscheiden lassen. Er ist der Künstler, ich, ich, ich spüre es nur, aber er kann es das dann schaffen. and I have an unlikely friendship. We dress different, we are different, we live in different places. But Moritz is somebody who has a really great belief system and I could really feel in him a true passion. This is what he wants to do. Any project that you do as a designer needs to have a reason. So you, you, you generally sit down and discuss, you know, how something's going to be used, what is the reason to be, why should something exist. And something like the Alpine capsule, I mean, It delivers something which I think a lot of people would like to experience. The Alpine capsule is this incredible ethereal infinity space. You lie on this irregular shaped bed. Maybe you can play classical music or something that's going to stimulate your senses. And then you're going to marvel at this 360 degree view around you. I couldn't think of a better way to wake up in the morning. It's completely transparent from the inside and at night you can see the stars. That will be a remarkable experience to be warm and cozy and very intimate with this vast universe. It's something that we, we just don't experience. And within a couple of years when the capsule is actually built, uh, we'll be able to experience those wonderful atmospheric conditions. In areas like this, where they predominantly build from wood, and you see the very old buildings, they're very beautiful. They work in total harmony with their environment. And I'm not looking to interfere with that at all. It's worse for me to design a hybrid type structure that's trying to tastefully fit in. But actually, it's not as synthetic as you think. It doesn't really interfere with nature. It just actually reflects and complements it. You probably won't even see it, because it'll just reflect anything around it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> It's designed to be functional in every season. So I have to deal with a lot of very, very technical things, which are not so much of an issue in the summertime as such, but they certainly do become an issue in the winter. We're looking at an off-grid idea called a power plant, which is a series of plant-like devices, partly solar, partly wind, that fund the powering of the object. And those ideas could ultimately be transported into the future. I'm often asked, are people ready for this type of stuff? Well, I think it's not a question of whether you're ready or not. I think, I always said, it's only the future if it can't be made. There's no such thing as something which is so far in the future that it's irrelevant. We've got to stop thinking about all the kind of old fuddy-duddy people who were holding us back and talk about the young people who believe that windmills look cool because of what they do. It's all ultimately about raising our awareness 
of the environment. That's what this is. I think when these things do come into reality, they could stimulate a fantastically optimistic new sense of our future. There's no good having science and technology if you don't have an instinct that can take that and put it into something that's going to move people's emotions. If we move people's emotions primarily, they will believe in that. The idea bleibt immer wieder, dass wir sicher ein Kunstwerk werden, ein Kunstwerk in den Alpen, in den Dolomiten.